In this slide cast, we're going to look at costs and rates related to uh, contracting. So let's look at some definitions first. A cost is the cost of producing an item. A unit cost is the produ cost of producing a one unit of an item. So a cost is what it costs you to uh, um, dig a hole, for example. So it would be the, the wages involved in the um, guys that are digging the hole. Uh, if you were talking about a unit cost, it would be the cost of digging um, one cubic metre, for example. So that's what unit cost means. A unit rate is the amount that is paid for a unit of a schedule item. So while it might cost you $100 to dig a cubic metre of soil, you would charge the client maybe $110, $120 to do that. To, to cover your overheads and your, your rates, your um, uh, profit. So that is what the unit rate is. It's the amount that's paid for the unit of the schedule item. Um, so those are the costs to do a unit of work. But the other half of that is how fast can you actually do that unit of work. So that is what the performance rate is. It's the number of, unit of units of work that can be carried out in a unit of time, usually an hour. So for example, a bulldozer, um, the unit rate, the performance rate would be something like 520 cubic metres per hour. That means every hour when that bulldozer is operating, it will shift 520 cubic metres of, of um, soil. So the unit measure there is cubic metres, the unit time is hours, one hour. Let's look at the contractor's cost. The contractor's cost is made up of several components um, which can be broken down into direct costs and margin, also known as markup. The first part, direct costs, are the costs that are directly related to constructing the works. The first one is net cost, which is labour, plant materials, subcontractors, all those things that are required to actually do the work. The people that are digging the holes, the people that are um, moving the soil around, the people that are whatever. Um, the, in addition to that, there's the on-site overhead, which is the people that are doing the supervision the cost of the cars that are moving everyone to site. So they are required to do the work but not directly uh, related to actually producing the contract works. The other half of it is the margin. Uh, one half of that is the offsite overheads, so head office overheads if you like. So that's the cost of the, the lady that's doing the timesheets, the cost of the um, person that's doing the company accounts, the cost of the company offices, the cost of the company workshop, the cost of the senior engineers who might work at the office and provide advice. So that's the offside overheads. In addition to that, there's profit. And that is the money that the owners of the business take and put in their own pockets or reinvest back into the company. So to do a unit rate to figure out a unit rate, you start off with the direct costs you add in the indirect costs and then you add in the profit, that's what makes it a rate. Um, notice that the direct costs and the indirect costs, there's not much movement on those, those are the costs of doing business and yes you can reduce people or you can try to do things cleverer but there's not much movement in there. Uh, with a contract document, uh, with a contract tender, the movement is in the profit. So the contractor can decide to reduce his profit to try to win a job, for example, um, in which case he doesn't make as much money out of it but he still gets the job, or he can increase the profit to try to maximise the amount of money he makes out of the job, uh, in which case he might not even get the job. Now the profit goes up and down according to the company, according to how um, much they really want the job. So in times when there's lots and lots of work around, the profit is usually quite high. You'll, you'll try to get as much money as you can for doing your work. If there's not much work around, then you're really um, 
minimizing your profit down because you want to win whatever work is there to keep your um, your plant your labor um, working the labor costs are the basic cost of labor this is uh, everything it costs to hire someone so you notice that there's uh, it's not just the wages, there's overtime travel, there's breaks, you know, uh, where they're not productive. Supervision, the person doing the supervision, or it could be somewhere else. Uh, you've got wet time, sick leave, annual leave, statutory holidays. Those are all time that the contract that the uh, worker is being paid for, but which are not productive. They're not contributing towards um, uh, doing the contract, doing the works. ACC levies. Um, contract allowances, profit and overheads. Um, so the ACC and the contract allowances are the legal requirements and profit and overheads is you want to make a little bit of money about for each person that works for you. Plant costs, you've got uh, the two types. You've got ownership costs which are fixed costs. That means that they still keep on costing you whether the plant is working or not working. So if it's sitting at the at the offices doing nothing, it's still attracting these costs, which is depreciation, interest, those are the costs of buying the machine and paying it off, uh, insurances and tax, the costs of making it legal. In addition to that, there's uh, operating costs, also known as variable costs. Uh, these are the costs that are only incurred when the machine is operating. So it is fuel, grease, uh, tires, filters, um, repairs, maintenance, and also the operator's wages. Material costs are obtained from the suppliers during the tender period. You need to include delivery, you need to include the costs of the supervisor um, coordinating everything. You also need to allow for wastage. So if you're doing polyethylene pipes for example, uh, you normally waste maybe 50 millimeters off each end when you're joining the pipe. It's just the nature of the way you do butt welding. Um, and you need to allow for that. So when the schedule, if the scheduler prices says 100 meters of pipe, you might order 120 meters of pipe or 110 meters of pipe. And you usually add 10 to 15 percent to the price. Once again, uh, contractors, you want to make a profit on everything you do. Subcontractor costs are much the same as the material costs. You need to allow for the supervision to coordinate them to make sure they're doing the job properly. You also need to allow for accommodation. If they um, you know, having smoko, you need to allow room in your lunch room for them, uh, toilets, uh, wash up facilities for them as well. So you need to include all of those. So oftentimes there is a percentage added to the subcontractor's price um, to um, determine the uh, rate that you're going to apply. Performance rates. These are the number of units of work that can be carried out in a unit of time. Um, it is important that uh, when you're making a, uh, the estimate of, of your tender price, you're making assumptions about what the performance rate is. You need to make some assumptions about how long an excavator has to be working to shift the soil that's uh, in the schedule of prices. So if the schedule of prices says a thousand cubic meters of soil needs to be shifted, you need to say, well, how long is that going to take us? Because you are paying for your excavator, for your labor on an hourly basis. So you need to be able to convert that quantity into a time. And the way you do that is from a performance rate. They are determined from previous experience. That's the best way. Um, a good operator will be able to tell you how long, how much uh, productivity he can do um, in certain circumstances, uh, and it will differ. So if it's wet, it's going to be lower productivity. If it's uh, light soil, it's going to be better productivity than if it's a heavy soil. If you strike rock, it's going to be very low productivity. If it's a really steep slope, it's going to be less productivity because they have to move slower. They, they, they're, they're not very safe. So previous experience, there's nothing better than uh, an experienced foreman or an operator to tell you how, how much, what their productivity can be. Another way is measurement. <clears throat> 
the way you do this is you just sit on site and measure how fast uh, what the productivity is so for example if you were wondering uh, how productive a, an excavator and trucks is you would sit there and you'd say for an hour you'd measure how, you'd count how many truckloads went by and so from that knowing the quantity of uh, knowing the capacity of the trucks you can figure out um, how many cubic meters per hour that uh, sorry how many cubic meters that you know, every hour that that team is moving and the last way is industry figures not very good but if you've got no other alternative that's alright so Rawlinson's has some performance rates I think they call them productivity rates uh, they're not they're slight, they can be conservative so as I said the performance rate will vary according to conditions is it wet or is it dry what type of soil have you got uh, is the site wet or dry uh, is the site steep or shallow is it easy to move around on is it safe to move around on uh, how far away from it um, from access is it for example so the tender build up you develop the unit rates and put them in the schedule of prices so you need to calculate and add up all the elements so if you're working from first principles uh, you would need to figure out the labor and plant required so you charge out rates times the performance rates and that, that gives you the rate for labor and plant for materials and subcontractors it's your cost plus your margin then you multiply the quantity by the unit rate to get the item amount and the item amounts add up to get the tender sum.